a few weeks ago, regulations enacted in the European Union went into effect that cover more than a dozen of the world's biggest tech platforms. This includes online marketplaces, app stores, and social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. The European Union regulations addressed a host of harmful practices, including preventing targeted advertising, minimizing illegal content and hate speech, and most importantly, protecting kids from harmful com com content. If companies fail to comply in the European Union, they can be fined up to 6% of their annual global revenue. They can also be banned from operating in European Union countries. This shows that big tech can be regulated. It is possible to craft rules to protect our families without breaking the miracle of the internet. In contrast to what's happening in Europe, here in the United States, Congress has failed to regulate high tech. And while we sit on our hands, other nations are moving ahead and shaping the rules of the digital world. Worse than that, while we fail to act, children are left in harm's way. We can and we must regulate big tech to protect our kids. Let me tell you about one young man named Carnell Johnson. He's from Illinois. He's a man who preyed on 17 victims, ranging in age from four to 17 years old, located across eight states. His tool of choice, Facebook. Johnson would set up profiles claiming to be a woman and then use these Facebook profiles to contact girls all over the country. First, he would entice these girls to send him sexually suggestive Im images of themselves in various stages of undress. Then he would use these images to coerce the victims into sending him sexually explicit content. He would threaten to post the nude pictures online unless the young victim submitted to his demands for still more explicit images. Horrifically, Johnson also directed his teenage victims to sexually abuse younger children in their household and send him the images. He was prosecuted and sentenced to 45 years in federal prison. Johnson was held accountable for his conduct. But what about Facebook? Johnson could not have committed his crimes without the social media platform. He could not have sexually exploited those 17 children in eight different states. Yet our current law, as written, shields Facebook from any accountability for the role they played in making Carnell Johnson's crimes possible. Sadly, there are many examples where big tech is failing children in America. Earlier this year, the Wall Street Journal exposed how Instagram's algorithms are connecting pedophiles and guiding them to locations where they can purchase child sexual abuse material. The platform permitted speed searches with terms associated with child abuse so vile that I won't repeat them in this chamber. Senator Lindsey Graham and I wrote to Meta, Instagram's parent company in June, asking for answers to explain these algorithms. We're still waiting. On X, formerly known as Twitter, Elon Musk reinstated the account of a user who was banned for tweeting an image of a toddler being tortured. As of late July, the, that image had drawn more than 3 million views and 8,000 retweets. A study released in June found that Twitter failed to stop the uploading of copies of known child sexual abuse material, CSAM. The study also found that Twitter would sometimes allow accounts to remain active until they had uploaded CSAM multiple times. Elon Musk's claim of zero tolerance for child exploitation on his platform doesn't reflect the disturb disturbing reality. Another company failing our children is Apple. In 2021, the company paused its plan to detect CSAM uploaded to its cloud service. Then last month, Wired published a letter from Apple in which the company confirmed it will make no effort to address child sexual abuse material stored on its platform. Apparently, Apple views permitting this ongoing child sexual exploitation as an acceptable and necessary cost of protecting their right to privacy. But I believe we can live in a world where user privacy and child safety can coexist. 
And I believe that I've written a bill that does just that. My Stop CSAM Act will end big tech's free ride and give victims a way to hold these companies accountable for their failure to stop online child sexual exploitation, in some cases for their actions that make it worse. Importantly, the bill achieves this goal in a manner that will avoid any unintended impact on technology that protects privacy. The Stop CSAM Act is a product of extensive consultations with stakeholders. It passed out of the Judiciary Committee, which I chair, unanimously. Every Democrat, every Republican supporting it. And I'm working to bring it to the floor. The Senate must act. Our failure to do so will preserve the status quo where our children are being sexually exploited online every single day. What a nightmare. As a father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, you think all the time, what are they looking at on those phones all day long? What's on those screens? What message is being sent to them? What is changing them from that experience? And what can I possibly do as a parent or grandparent to police what's going on there? We need to have the law on our side. Sure, I want to be certain to recognize the basic fundamental constitutional rights in our country, but I have to acknowledge as well, we aren't doing anything at this point. The current law says that these platforms are not responsible for whatever they do or fail to do. It's a get out of jail free card completely, and it's been that way for decades. We've got to wake up to the reality of the years we live in and the reality of life and families across America. Even the most conscientious parents cannot know what is going on every hour of every day with children in these screens. S sexploitation, which I outlined here in detail, is happening. And what are we doing about it? If we're going to help Americans raise good kids, and we want them all to raise good kids, we've got to give them the tools and we've got to back them up with laws that say this, that we're going to take it seriously. The European Union has done it, so why not the United States of America? It's time for us to make progress in this area for the good of our children. I yield the floor. Say, of course.